Before this uh, video starts, everyone, I'm very sorry for the loud music. The recording software actually messed up and filmed the desktop audio at the volume I wanted the mic audio. And also, just to know that this is purely for fun, this is not too scientific, but I also wanted to say that a few of the recordings actually messed up. So if you see another black part like this, it's purely because I've had to fill in information due to the uh, recordings not properly working. And also, um, just make sure not to take anything in this video too seriously. A lot of the facts in here may be outdated or not 100% true. Again, these haven't been taken from the most trustworthy sources. So if you do feel you're in danger, do not worry. This is not 100% true. But if you do see anything, do report it. And at worst case scenario, you could probably visit some websites. It shows you where the most common sightings for anything is. So just take take this whole video with a grain of salt. Now, here you go, guys. As a child, I grew up hearing stories about uh, the beast of Bolton Moor or big cats found within the UK. And I could never understand the difference between real or fake. So I've decided today that I'm going to a country. As you can see here, there's some multiple sightings of big cats within the UK. Now, whether or not these are real or false, well, we don't know right now. Now, before we get started with anything, let's check the history, see if there's any way that these big cats could have made their way to the country. This site here specializes in the UK big cat problem and as you can see here it says that during the 1960s and 70s it was legal to actually keep big cats such as uh, leopards, boomers and panthers. Now uh, as it says here 1976 the Dangerous Wild Animal Act got passed. Now what does this mean? Well you see this meant that people could just well, this Dangerous Animal Act meant that people had to give up their animals. That meant putting them down, sending them to the zoo, or releasing them. Because you see, owners didn't want to kill their pets. So instead what happened was, they released them into the wilds. Places like the Cotswolds, Birmingham, all these different areas. Owners would release their big cats. And because of that, and other factors such as escapes from prisons, still illegal pet trafficking today, and modern, even though with legislation uh, and licensing, modern big cat owners losing their pets. Because of all these reasons, it is safe to say that there is a chance that this theory could be more than just that. See, the biggest question in a situation like this would be, could a big cat survive? off the British fauna, or life, and to be honest, they could. As you can see here, there is a large amount of small mammals and some other bigger mammals living within the UK. So we, we've got uh, different sorts of creatures such as deer, we even have livestock such as cattle and sheep. So nothing is stopping these creatures from surviving within our environment. Now, I understand what a lot of people may say. Okay, so there's big cats in England, but what's the real problem? Well, firstly, if you haven't seen here, of course, there's the issue of eating livestock. As you know, in the in the, in New England, there is a big livestock. Um, livestock can bring in a lot of money. Farming is very good for the economy. So by having these big cats, which are suddenly coming in and ruining that, it could have larger knock-on effects, especially if they do start breeding because if there are big cats they will eventually start to breed a lot more than they already have furthermore as the as we are the uk we're not equipped to tackle with big cats so let's say you are out hunting with friends or you're in a forest and you come face to face it's not like in school they tell us how to deal with these yeah, in like if you're in America, if you go into the forest, they'll tell you oh to fend off a bear. You either go through its nose or you roll into a bull. In the UK, if you come across a big cat, you're in a bad shape, and this is shown through well the story I'm about to show you.
this video right here which you can personally find yourself i am not gonna play any audio or show too much of it due to copyright issue but as you can see here this is a nat geo wild documentary on big cat attacks attacks now believe it or not there have been claims and i'm gonna find this after i explain but there was a boy walking and he was brutally attacked leaving his face covered in scratch marks and blood now that goes back to what i was saying people in the uk don't know how to fend off against these so if you're in wales and you come across a puma or if you're in um uh birmingham and you find yourself in face to face with a panther what are you supposed to do well i'm gonna cover that later on in the video now i'm not trying to pass this so as uh, mentioned at the start of the video this is actually one of the clips that for some reason corrupted so without any music i'm very sorry for the lack of music i understand that it's clearly the very best part of the uh, video i'm gonna summarize exactly what i was talking about um if you go to wales online which i was supposed to say is not the most trustworthy source of information but does show that there has been reports of this happening we can see that the local community of farmers within a, a local community of farmers within wales, rural wales have had a large predator akin to a large a very large dog but scientifically proven not to be a large dog has been eating their lamb or other livestock and they believe that there is at least two of these predators in Pembrokeshire countryside and the idea is the reason that they think this is big cats is because they found the sheep's throats torn to shreds they have seen that their necks were broken and that they had been pounced on not and this isn't synonymous behavior within a fox or a dog so it must have been something else as shown here on the guardian which again i'm not saying this is 100 percent true but this is just showing that there is been rumors of this at least here is a boy 11 year old boy who was supposedly attacked by a big cat now people don't understand well this could have broken out from uh, uh, zoo or something, which is probably what people would say in the comments. Oh, it's just people who have kept pets, cats, and it's broken out or something. But even here, experts believe the big cat has bred in the wild after escaping. Now, that's the one that I'm mainly going to focus on, the idea that they are breeding in our wilds. Because these big cats, no, they never found the big cat. Meaning that this creature could still be out there and this this place is not far from where a lot of us live You know if you live in the UK You could be three hours 30 minutes five minutes away from where some of these attacks happen and people don't even know about this stuff It's ridiculous Now this is where This story becomes personal for me Because as I said in the beginning as a kid in school by parents we would always be told of the beast of Bodmin Moor the, the big cat, the panther the black green eyed beast that's breast smelt like the insides of rabbits that mauled on the livestock and the dogs of the area the creature that, that haunted the people and that was scary as a kid to hear, you know posters pictures of this supposed superstitious creature that would prowl the lands no one knew if it was real the supposed eyewitnesses supposed pictures of animals that have been eaten it was all over the place but now now we're gonna try and get to the bottom of it so right here on the cornwall guide I have found a little uh, reading up on the beast of Bodmin Moor. There's no doubt that Bodmin Moor is a creepy place should you happen to find yourself alone there as dusk is falling. Try not to think about the layer of legend, horror and mystery associated with the wild and rugged landscapes. And in particular, whatever you do, do not try to let your mind dwell on the beast. 
The beast is a result of some 60 sightings of black panther-like big cats, supposedly 3 to 5 feet long and supporting white yellow eyes combined with numerous reports of mutilated livestock. The evidence was robust enough that in 1995 the government ordered an official investigation into the existence of a such beast. The report finally concluded that there was no verifiable evidence of a big cat on Bodmin Moor, although it was careful to state that there is no evidence against it either. Shortly after the report was published, the public were fabricated and a small boy found a leopard skull lying on the banks of the river Fowey. Big cat speculation reached a fever pit. Had it escaped from a nearby zoo? Was it author of the mutilations? Natural History Museum, Boringlun soon found the leopard skull to have been imported into this country as part of a leopard skin rug. Once again, the controversy died down, although sightings were still reported as re reasonable and regular, until in 1998, vid video footage was uh, released that clearly showed a black animal, probably a big cat around three and a half feet long. The video described by the curator of Nukwe Zoo, uh, um, and wildcat expert as the best video evidence yet. Theories abound. If it does exist, perhaps the animal is a big cat that escaped the zoo or a private collection and was not reported because they had been imported legally. A hypothesis rejected by scientific by scientists on the ground that the numbers need to sustain a breeding population would be too large for the food supply. Some believe the animal is a species of loud is a species of wildcat which had believed to have been extinct. Others believe it was paranormal, saying that it made the screams of women and children. So, this is all of the information I've been able to uncover right now. And it's not stating any facts yet, I've just presented evidence. In part two, we're going to come back to this subject, and we're going to refine a lot of this information. This cryptid, or reality, won't go unsolved. Now, before I end off part one, I want to put in a small part of big cat safety. So, just in case this is ever proven true, get everyone prepared. So, how to survive a um, attack from a big cat? Well, firstly, be aware of your surroundings. Always keep your eyes open. Because usually when a big cat hunts, it stalks its prey, it stays hidden, and you probably won't even see it until it tries to attack. Now, what a lot of people say is you either carry around bear spray or a very strong scent, usually something like coyote pee, wolf pee, something that keeps it away from you, something that shows you're there. Now, what a lot of people online are saying is either tuck into a bull hope it just avoids you but usually big cats do scavenge so if it sees that you're dead it will probably try and take a bite or you stand your ground you open your arms make a lot of noise you go like ooh, ooh, ooh. that's a good noise to make as long as you do it a lot louder you make sure that you look big you make sure that you look dangerous now um you could either carry around a weapon as long as you stay calm you can carry around a weapon because usually the big cats are scared, more scared of you in some terms than you are them. So carry around a weapon. If one comes at you, start swinging. That should either scare it off. Always aim for the nose or the face. Worst case scenario, if it gets on you, start prodding at its body, its genitalia, and again its nose or face. Big cats will not be aggressive when full. They don't kill for sport. Meaning if you do see one, just lock eyes with it. Never turn your back to it. And try to either back away very slowly, non-threatening way, or big yourself up and then back away. As long as you do not seem like a, a, a threat, you'll be okay. If you start running, it may become aggressive. That's because that's their impulse, especially when hunting deer. When the deer starts running, claws out, teeth open, it will go after you. <sighs> now... Think about this as well. If you're going to have an encounter with a predator, usually if it's full, it won't attack. So you should be okay. That just keep all of this in mind and you probably will not have a negative experience with any sort of big cat. <laughs>